Welcome to our introduction to Power Query tutorial. In this interactive series of quick videos, we'll walk you through how to get started with Power Query and take your data transformation skills to the next level. To get started, we'll download some data from a website. This step will just show you how to get data from various sources, so we won't be doing any transformations yet. First, open the introduction to Power Query workbook. When you're done, copy the URL on the import data from web worksheet. You can see that it's going to take us to a Wikipedia page for the FIFA World Cup standings. Next, go to Data, Get and Transform, From Web. Use Control-V to paste the URL into the URL text box, then press OK. In the Navigator pane, under Display Options, select the Results table. Power Query will preview it for you in the Table View pane on the right. Press Load, and Power Query will transform the data and load it into Excel as a table. Double-click the Sheet tab name and rename it World Cup Results. In the future, should you need to refresh the table to get updates to this World Cup data, you'd select the table, then click Query Refresh. We'll continue the tutorial in this workbook, so go ahead and start the next video, and we'll pick up by importing some table data from Excel into Power Query. For the rest of this tutorial, we'll be working with data that's already in an Excel worksheet and use Power Query to transform and clean it to look the way that you want. We'll start off where we left off in the first step, and you'll notice that there are worksheets for product categories and for sales data. Our first step is to load the sales data into Power Query. Once you apply some data transformations, Power Query will create a new worksheet with those transformations, but the source data will remain the same. This means that you can experiment all you want and be reassured that your original data won't get compromised. With the cursor anywhere in the table, go to Data, Get and Transform Data, from Table Range. Excel will automatically launch the Power Query Editor with your data displayed in a preview pane. We're not going to do any transformations in this step, but we will review the Query Editor and its different elements. First, we'll start with the Queries pane. Expand the arrow to the left of the Preview pane, and the Queries pane will display any existing query tables in the workbook. You'll see the Product Sales table listed last, then the World Cup Results table, and then the tables that we used earlier in the tutorial workbook. As you add new tables, they'll automatically be listed here. Next, we'll move on to Query Settings. This pane shows the transformation steps you take with each of your queries. Here you can preview any existing steps and change or delete them. You might also notice that Power Query has already added a few steps for you. Source, this defines the source for your data. Change type, here Power Query has analyzed your data and made some preliminary decisions for you based on the data types it interpreted. You can always adjust these later. Next is the Home tab. This is where you'll start previewing your data and making transformations. When you're done, you can always use Close and Load to get your transform data back to Excel. The Transform tab just gives you more in-depth transformational options than on the Home tab. You probably won't use this very much when you're getting started. Add Column. This gives you the ability to get data from your existing columns, like the day of the week from a date or creating your own custom calculations. Finally, there's the View tab. This gives you a few different view options, like launching the Advanced Query Editor. Again, this is one you probably won't use very much when you're getting started. Finally, we'll go back to the Home tab and press Close and Load to put the table back to Excel. Had we applied any transformations with this table, you'd see them reflected here. In this case, we didn't do anything, so the data looks the same as when we started. However, you might notice that Excel's created a new worksheet for you, so it's a good idea to go ahead and rename it. I'll call this one PQ Sales Data, so I can tell the difference between it and the source data. Any transformations you make from here on out will be reflected in this worksheet, and the sales data sheet will remain exactly the same. In the next video, we'll start transforming our data by giving it some new column headers. Now we're ready to start applying some transformations. The first is to make sure the column headers make sense. These came from a database and need to be friendlier. 
for example, product name is a whole lot nicer than txt underscore prod name. Go to the Query pane, then select Edit to launch the Power Query Editor. Next, give the top row a quick glance to make sure that Power Query recognizes your headers. In this case it does, but if it doesn't, then you can go to Home, Transform, and check the Use First Row as Headers option. Power Query has recognized that our sample data has headers, so we don't need to do anything, but watch what happens if you do try it. Power Query takes your first row of data and converts it to a header row, which you don't want in this case, so I'll delete that step, which takes us back to our original headers. We do need to rename the columns, so you can double-click each column header and type the name you want or edit an existing one. Once you're done changing the header titles, you can go to Home, Close and Load to send the header row transformations back to Excel. In the next video, we'll review steps for converting a date field so it displays the way you want. Next we'll work with data type conversions. You'll see here that the order date field is formatted as month, day, year, hours, and minutes, but we only want the date, so we'll have Power Query convert it. Select the date column, then go to Home, Transform, Data Type. Select the date option. Note that you're not limited to date time conversions. You can also convert to other numeric types such as percentage or currency. It's really up to you. If you get a notification that data type transformations already exist, you can ignore it since you're overriding the date transformation that Power Query thought you wanted when you loaded the data. Next, go to Home, then Close and Load to see your transformation applied in Excel. In the next video, we'll use Power Query's filter feature to remove unnecessary rows. Stripping an existing report of extraneous artifacts, like rows that separate orders or show page numbers, can get in the way of being able to do what you want with your data. For example, our sample data has summary rows after each sales rep's daily transactions. These will only get in the way if you try to summarize the data, so we'll get rid of them with a simple filter. In more complex scenarios, you might end up performing a series of filters to get where you want to be. First, select the filter drop-down from the product name column. You can uncheck the Total Sales Rep option, or use a text filter. In this case, I'll choose Text Filters, Does Not Begin With, and I'll enter the word Total, then OK. Power Query will filter out those rows that have the word Total in them, and leave you with just the records you want. With your data now filtered the way that you want, go to the Home tab and press Close and Load to send it back to Excel. In the next video, we'll show you how to split data into multiple columns. A lot of times you'll get data that's been consolidated into one column, like first name, last name. For personalization, you might want those to be in separate columns, so we'll split the data. In this case, we're going to split sales rep first name and last names. Select the sales rep column. Then go to Home, Transform, Split Column. Choose the By Delimiter option. Next, use the default Each Occurrence of the Delimiter option and press OK. Power Query splits the sales rep names into two different columns named Sales Rep 1 and Sales Rep 2. Those don't make any sense, so rename them Sales Rep first sales rep last. Press close and load back to Excel to see the results. Coming up, we'll continue working with columns and show you how to create a column from an example. In this example, we'll add several columns to parse out different date types from the existing order date field. This can be helpful if you need to identify the day of the week or spell out a date, such as Monday, January 15th. First, select the Order Date column, then go to Add Column, Column from Example, from Selection. Power Query will add a new column for you, and in the first row, type January. 
You'll see Power Query give you a suggestion, and if it's what you want, then press Enter to accept it and OK to complete it. Notice that when you do, Power Query automatically rename the column to month name. Next, select the order date column again and add a new column. Then type day and select Monday from the list. Power Query will fill the column with day names and rename the column day name. Finally, we'll do a more complex transformation where you'll actually teach Power Query what you want. Select the order date column again and add a new column. Then type Monday, comma, January 15th, comma, 2018, which corresponds with that row's date, and press Enter. If nothing happens, then copy the date you just entered and paste it in the row below. This time, Power Query has determined that I want to do something with the order date, but not what. So press Enter, then go to the third row, and enter Saturday, comma, January 20, comma, 2018. Power Query fills in the date pattern I want, but the dates aren't quite correct so we need to teach it just a little bit more. In this step, double-click the fourth row and replace January with February. Hit Enter, and finally Power Query figured out the pattern that I wanted and applies it to the rest of the rows. Will you have to go to this extent all the time? No, but now you know that you can teach Power Query to recognize patterns when you need it. From here, you can go to Home, Close, and Load, but you might also want to change the header row because Power Query didn't quite figure that one out. I'm just going to name it Custom Date, but you can do anything that you want. Next, we'll continue working with columns and create a conditional column where you'll tell Power Query to do something only if your condition is met. In this section, we'll create a 2.5% bonus calculation for all sales over $25,000. This means writing a formula in Power Query's Formula Builder, but if you're at all familiar with Excel formulas, then you'll be fine. Go to Add Column, Custom Column. Next, enter Bonus in the New Column Name text box. Next, we'll enter a custom formula, so in the Custom Column Formula section below and to the right of the equal sign, enter if total sales greater than 25,000, then total sales times .025, else zero. If you don't want to type the table names by hand, and you can double click the one you want from the available columns list and Power Query will add it for you along with the open and closing brackets. This may sound kind of strange, but if you read it to yourself once you've written the formula, it does make sense. All it says is if total sales is greater than $25,000, then take total sales times .025, otherwise return a zero. If you look at the bottom of the custom formula pane, you'll see that Power Query gives you an all's clear message if you input the formula correctly. Otherwise, it will point out where you have an issue. The Power Query formulas can get very complex, just like in Excel, and now you know where to find them. In fact, there's a link to the Power Query formula reference in the Custom Column dialog below. Now that we're done with the Custom Column, I'll press Close and Load to see the Bonus Column in Excel. In the next video, we'll review merging queries to add the missing product categories to our sales data. As our data stands now, we can only summarize at the product level, but if you look at the category table, you'll see that products can be rolled up a level. In this section, we'll load the category table and create a join on the product name fields to do just that. Select the categories table, then go to data, get and transform data from table or range. You don't need to do anything else here, so close and load the table back to Excel and rename the sheet tab PQ categories. Next, select the Sales Data Sheet, open Power Query, then go to Home, Combine, Merge Queries, Merges New. In the Merge dialog, the Sales Table will be shown at the top. In the drop-down beneath that, select the Product Name column. In the next drop-down, select the Category Table and the Product Name column beneath that. Power Query will let you know whether or not it was able to join the two tables, and if it's good to go, then press OK to complete the join. Power Query returns the sales data, which you might have expected, but the category column doesn't seem all that helpful, does it? It's for good reason, because you need to tell Power Query which table columns you want to display. For this exercise, we just want the master category, 
so click on the Field List Filter button, choose Category, and press OK. Power Query will then display the two tables combined, but the Category column is stuck all the way to the right-hand side, so I'm going to move it. We don't need the table name and the column title either, so I'll go ahead and remove that. Now the data is ready for you to send back to Excel with Close and Load. Note that Power Query creates a new worksheet for you, which I'll rename PQ Merge. You'll also see a new query in the Query and Connections dialog pane. This is great because it didn't alter any of the transformations we applied so far. This lets you create multiple views based on the same data, which can be incredibly helpful if you need to create different reports. If you like, you can also change the query title to be more descriptive. Hover over the query name, then select the ellipsis from the query dialog and choose the property setting. I'll change this one to Merge Tables. In the next video, we'll go over how to review each of your applied steps and adjust them if necessary. In this section, we'll go over the applied steps for the product sales query, show you how to walk through each query step, and make any adjustments needed before you finish. Since we finished the last step on the new query that merged the product and category tables, we'll need to expand the queries pane and select the product sales table. This will take us to where we left off with the product sales table when we added the bonus column. First, select the source step, and Power Query will immediately return the table data to its original state. If you recall from earlier, Power Query automatically adds the source and change type steps for you, so you don't need to do anything here. You could even delete the change type step if you wanted, since we adjust the date type later on anyway. Moving on, the renamed columns step is where we renamed columns from their original database names. Notice as I select each step, Power Query is automatically previewing it for me. This is a great tool because you don't have to guess if your step is doing what you want or not. The next step, Change Type 1, is where we change the date to not include hours or minutes. Unfortunately, Power Query's titles aren't all that descriptive, so I'll change it to Change Date Type. Similarly, you might want to change the Split Column by Delimiter step to Split Sales Rep Names. Next, I'll choose the Added Custom step, which is the Bonus Calculation, so I should change that to Bonus. You can also change a step's parameters by clicking on the gear icon if it has one. For instance, you might change the sales amount or commission percentage. In this case, I'm just going to press Cancel. This is just a sample of what you can do, but it's always a good idea to go through your applied steps before you distribute your workbook, because you might find that certain steps can be managed better once you get the entire procedure set up. It's also better to catch an issue here than to have someone point out something to you later. When you're done, press Close and Load to see your changes update in Excel. In the next step, we'll show you how to add data to your source data, then refresh it in Excel. When you do, Power Query will automatically apply each of your transformations behind the scenes. One of Power Query's best attributes is that if you add new data, it will automatically reapply all of your transformations when you refresh your queries. This means you only need to create a query once and you can run it whenever you want. And as you've seen, it's also easy to go in and edit your existing queries. I'm going to add three rows of data to the current sales data table, then refresh and display the updated results. I'm going to add one record here that's over $25,000 so we can make sure that the bonus calculation gets triggered the way that it should. If you're manually entering new data or copying and pasting it, make sure to add it to the raw data worksheet and not to the Power Query worksheet. Once you've added some sample data, go to the Table Design tab and select the Refresh All option. You'll see Excel doing its thing in the background, and when it's done, we can check out the PQ sales data sheet to see the results. Thanks for following along with this introduction to Power Query tutorial. You can find more information about Power Query at support.office.com forward slash Excel.